Is this thing on? Testing? One, two, three. It's on, Professor. All righty then. Welcome to English 101. You will see on your syllabus that... Uh, what's the matter? Where's my class? Well, your class, Professor Jameson, is, is the video camera. Oh, remote learning. How 21st century of you. Mm-hmm. Anyway, class, today's vocabulary word is inexpressible. Can you all say inexpressible? Inexpressible. Whoa, the video camera just talked to me. Just, just go with the flow. All right. Well, the word inexpressible means incommunicable or ineffable. Ineffable? Ineffable. Do you really think that defining inexpressible by saying ineffable is going to help anyone? Well, okay then, how about this? Inexpressible means too extreme to be adequately narrated or chronicled. I'm really not sure that this is helping the kids out. Kids? This is a college-level English class. Kids, what do you want me to do? See spot run? Look, maybe I could do an illustration to help us understand what inexpressible means. Okay, fine. Well, a lot of times my kids really enjoy playing games. Who doesn't? But often the games they play, they make up themselves. Ooh, very clever. Mm -hmm, and sometimes convoluted. Oh, well, look who's using big words now. Sorry, complicated. That's better. So I will say to them, what are you guys playing? And they'll think about it, and they'll try to explain it, and then they'll stop and they'll say, it's too hard to explain. Uh-huh. Well, that's it. What? Inexpressible. Inexpressible means that your kids are playing games? No. Inexpressible means too hard to explain. Oh, well... That's what I was saying. Well, yes, but in kind of a convoluted way. Sorry. Anyway, the word inexpressible shows up in the Bible. And when it does, it has a very positive connotation. Positive connotation? That means good. <laughs> All right, so inexpressible, something is too wonderful to explain. That's exactly right. For example... 2 Corinthians 9.15 says, Thanks be to God for his inexpressible gift. So thanks be to God for his gift that's too wonderful to explain. You got it. And right before that, Paul had been saying to the Corinthians how glad he was that they were giving gifts to people in need. So in a way, Paul is comparing the Corinthians to God and saying, as generous as you are, God gives gifts that are even more wonderful. That's exactly right. God is so generous that it's too wonderful to explain. And the gift itself, God's salvation, is also too wonderful to explain. And there's another place that the word inexpressible shows up. It's in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 8, where Peter says, Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible. <laughs> that is too wonderful to explain. Even though we haven't seen him, we believe in him, and that belief gives us a joy that's too hard to explain. And you know, this kind of makes me think of Christmas. Christmas? We're talking about Thanksgiving here. Well, I know, but I was thinking at Christmas time we give our children gifts. Yes. And sometimes they're so excited about getting a gift that they can't even think of words to explain how excited they are. So what did they do? They just sit there and go, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Over and over again? Over and over again. And you know what? What? We don't ever get tired of hearing it. So when God's inexpressible gift fills us with inexpressible joy, then sometimes all we can do is just say, thank you, thank you, thank you to God and he never gets tired of hearing it. And you know, talking about inexpressible joy makes me think of a song. Oh boy. Hit it, George. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart. 
down in my heart I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart down in my heart to stay and I'm so happy it's so very happy I've got the love of Jesus in my heart and I'm so happy so very happy I've got the love of Jesus in my heart I've got the peace that passes understanding down in my heart down in my heart down in my heart I've got the peace that passes understanding down in my heart down in my heart to stay oh, peace that passes understanding that's a tongue twister isn't it you better believe it but this next verse I know totally inexpressible. I can't fit those words in. All right, I'll take care of this one. Thank you. I've got the wonderful love of my blessed Redeemer way down in the depths of my heart. Where? Way down in the depths of my heart. Where? Way down in the depths of my heart. I've got the wonderful love of my blessed Redeemer way down in the depths of my heart. Where? Way down in the depths of my heart to stay. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. Uh, does, does it seem a little dark in here to you? Hello? Um, uh, who, who turned out the lights? Hang on a sec. I think maybe we lost power. Oh, well, I hope they come back on. I'm, I'm, I'm scared of the dark. Darkness is what made the dodo birds go extinct in the first place. Oh, there we go. Whew, that's much better. Anyway, I understand you have a Bible verse you wanted to teach. That's right. I wanted to teach you James chapter 1, verse 17. And it says, oh, there go the lights again. Maybe we're having a thunderstorm. No, oh, oh, thunderstorms are what made the dodo birds go extinct in the first place. I thought it was darkness. W well, 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 sure, but that was the first time. Uh, okay, here we go. The lights are on again. Can I teach you the Bible verse now? Okay. The verse says that every good and perfect gift comes down from God, who is the Father of lights in whom there is no variation or shifting shadow. Well, that sounds very nice, but I have no idea what it's talking about. God is the father of lights? What does that even mean? The very best and most beautiful lights, God is greater and more beautiful by far, and more reliable. For sure more reliable than these lights. And you know, even the great lights of the sky disappear. We see the sun in the day, but then at night, we don't. And the moon disappears every month. And most of the time in the day. But, but, but there's this thing about shifting shadows. What's that all about? Well, in the days when James wrote this, people didn't have electricity. They lit their houses in the evening using candles and lanterns, and those candles and lanterns flickered. So? Well, think about it. When a lantern flickers, what happens to the shadows? Ooh, they flicker too, and it can look very, very creepy. <laughs> yes, it can look very creepy. But God doesn't flicker. Doesn't flicker? He's always there. He's constant and sure. Also, in the Bible, darkness is a symbol for things that are bad. So saying that God is the father of lights is telling us that he is the father of all good things. Oh, and he's not just good, he's good all the time. That's right, God is good. All the time. All the time? God is good. And he always gives us good gifts. That's what the verse is telling us. Every good and perfect gift comes down from God. So. So what are the good and perfect gifts that God has given us? Well, you know, there are a lot of them right there in the book of James, and I could list for you just a few. For one thing, God helps us to grow mature and complete through the difficulties of life. Well, well wait a minute. Are you telling us that the difficulties of life are a good and perfect gift? I'm telling you that the joy and the peace that God can bring to us through those difficulties are perfect gifts. Peace and joy. 
during troubles. Those are pretty nice. Mm -hmm. Also, James tells us that if any of us lack wisdom, we can ask God and God will generously give to us without grumbling and being grumpy about it. Oh, I like the fact that God isn't grumpy with me. <laughs> yep. Here's another good and perfect gift. James tells us that we don't have to worry about collecting wealth in this world or being rich. Why not? Well, because the greatest riches we can receive here are nothing compared to the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. To be rich in faith, and to inherit the kingdom of God. That is a truly perfect gift. Mm-hmm. And then one more thing that I think is really important for us to remember. It's, it's my favorite. Now, I'm listening. Right after James tells us that God is the giver of good and perfect gifts, he tells us that God gave us new birth through the word of truth. I, I, I'm not sure what that means. It means that even though we were in darkness, God shined the light of his truth on us. And even though sin brings death, God, through the work of Jesus on the cross, gives righteousness and new life. Though that's that's a lot of that's a lot of good gifts. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure I can remember them all. Well, if you'd like, I could sing a song for you that I use to help me remember them. A song about good and perfect gifts? That's exactly right. And it's called every good gift. I'd like to hear it. Let peace and joy fall on us Like rains fall on parched and dry land Let God's wisdom fall on us Receive from God's gracious hand Every good gift, every perfect gift Comes down from the Father of lights Every good gift, every perfect gift Comes down from the Father of lights God's riches fall on us In the midst of our poverty Let righteousness fall on us As blood falling from Christ's own wounds Every good gift, every perfect gift Comes down from the Father gift comes down from the Father of lights. Every good gift, every perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights. Every good gift Every perfect gift comes down from the Father of Lights. Father of Lights. Father of Lights. One of the funny things about making a video like this is I know exactly when I intend to release the video, but I have no idea when you're going to watch it. My intent is to release this during November, in time for Thanksgiving. But you might watch it at some other time of the year. You might watch it at Christmas time, or maybe Canadian Thanksgiving, or Valentine's Day, or maybe just some random, unremarkable day in August. But the idea of being thankful is not just for the fourth Thursday in November. It is for the whole year round. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 20 tells us that we should give thanks to God in all things. For everything. 
And that means we don't store up our giving of thanks for one day out of the year. Thanksgiving is to be in our hearts and on our lips 365 days of the year. Now, in our family, we make a habit of stopping before mealtimes and at bedtime for a simple song of thanksgiving or a quick word of prayer. And I try to make a point when I'm giving thanks to find something special about the day to give thanks for. And sometimes the kids give thanks, and I never know what they're going to give thanks for, except one of them I can pretty much guarantee is going to say, thank you, God, for fun. Amen. And that is just fine. It can seem like a mindless ritual at times, and I don't want it to be that. I don't want it to be mindless. But even rituals have their time and their place and their value. Even if the prayer is nothing more than a simple, thank you, God, for such a good day. It is a simple and ongoing reminder that every good and perfect gift we have comes from God, that we owe what we have to him. And I'd like to encourage you at whatever stage of life you're at to begin developing a similar ritual. It doesn't have to be at mealtimes. It could be while you're on your way to school or on your way to the office. It could be while you're brushing your teeth in the morning or at night. But take some time to think about what blessings has God given me today and thank him for those blessings. We express gratitude to God, and at times it may seem like we're just saying the same things over and over and over again. And I'd like to remind you of what I said earlier about my children. Sometimes all they can think of to say is, thank you, thank you, thank you. And we never get tired of hearing it. And so when you can't think of anything else to do because God's goodness is so inexpressible, just say, thank you, thank you, thank you. And God will never get tired of hearing that. To wrap things up, a couple of the boys are going to sing a song for you. It's titled, A Child's Thanksgiving. And perhaps this song could become part of your daily ritual of Thanksgiving as well. Savior gave his life for me. I thank you, Lord. Hold it, hold it. What's the matter, Dr. Jonas? We're not finished yet. We're not? No. I know we've been talking about being thankful to God, but we should be thankful to people, too. Well, that's true. Did you have someone in mind? I sure did. All those folks out there listening to us. I mean, they just spent 20 minutes listening to us talk and sing, and well, they could have been doing a lot of other things. Well, that's true. So thank you very much for joining us and listening to us. We really appreciate it. And go out and have a wonderful, thankful day. <laughs>